One day, while wandering in the vicinity of Vault 101, we pick up a new signal on our Pip-Boy. The Vault 101 Emergency Frequency. Opening it up in our Pip-Boy. This is an automated distress message from Vault Tech. Vault 101. Message begins. It feels like you left home a long time ago, but I know you're still out there. I just hope you're still alive to hear this. Things got worse after you left. My father's gone mad with power. If you can hear this, please stop looking for your dad and help stop mine. I changed the door password to my name. If you're hearing this, and if you still care enough to help me, you should remember it. Message repeats. It's Amada, our childhood friend, the daughter of the Overseer and it sounds like she's in trouble. This signal only appears after we complete the quest, The Waters of Life, and it doesn't last very long. After receiving the signal, if we don't respond within a handful of days, the signal goes dark, and we never find out what happened at Vault 101. But if we respond in time, we can return to Vault 101, head through the door, and type the password into the vault door control pod, Amata. Stepping inside, we find melee weapons lying on the ground. A sledgehammer, a baseball bat, as if someone's been trying to get out. And heading up the stairs, we find the corpse of Jim Wilkins. How did he die? And heading towards the room with the secret tunnel to the overseer's office, we find the corpse of Steve Armstrong. And on his body is a stealth boy. Looks like he tried to get out. The overseer tunnel is not open, so we have to head through the main door. And on the other side of the door... Stop right there. I don't know how you got in here, but... Hold on. Wait a minute. It's you! I hardly recognized you with all the dust and grime from out there. Guess that explains how you got that door open. You've got more experience with it than most everyone down here combined. I just thought I'd stop back home for a bit. How's the old vault? You just thought you'd pop in? Don't take this the wrong way, but you probably ought to just turn around and not come back. Things, well, they haven't gone very well since you and your dad left. This isn't the happy vault you grew up in anymore. There's real trouble. Don't mind me. I'm just here to pick up some stuff I left behind. This isn't some sort of hotel, you know. You don't just come and go as you please. I thought you were raised better than that. Sorry. It's just been pretty rough down here since you and your dad left. There's real trouble brewing, and you don't want to be a part of it. Where the hell is Amata? So help me if you've hurt her. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Calm down there. Amata's not in any danger. I mean, we're all in a sort of a rough patch, but we've weathered worse. But sorry to say, if you're back, there's going to be trouble with some folks. And if Amata's wrapped up in it, there'll be trouble for her too. I need to talk with Amata. I got her message. Amata's message? I don't know what you're talking about, but I'd keep that under your hat for her sake. She could get in real trouble if people found out she sent you a message. So could I, just for talking with you now. Oh, I mean, I just had a hunch she was in trouble. Maybe. She isn't the only one, that's for sure. Ever since last night, it's been madness down here. Nothing but trouble. Her safety is a risk I'm willing to take. Technically, this means I'm supposed to report her. To tell the truth, I'm supposed to report you being here, too. But I've been getting mighty forgetful in my old age, you know? We've got more than enough trouble without me adding to it. I always knew something would go wrong down here. It wouldn't have if your father hadn't ruined everything by opening that door. Things were just fine until he decided to take a little walk. Then we had bug attacks, confusion, and chaos. And with no doctor, too. What's happened down here since I left? Everything went crazy is what happened. Your dad opened that door, bugs started attacking, and people started going crazy. When the smoke cleared, there were a lot of casualties and not many answers. Didn't help that our doctor had just left, either. What sort of trouble do you mean? Let me bring you up to speed. It seems like it's been a mighty long time. The night you and your dad left, everything went crazy. 
Between the bugs and the confusion, we lost a lot of people. When your dad opened up that gate, he let loose a whole lot of crap, if you'll pardon my language. Yeah, dad screwed up all our lives that day, didn't he? To tell the truth, I don't really blame him for all that. I don't know why he left, but I do know he'd never intend for all that to happen. But when the smoke cleared, other people started thinking about opening the vault permanently, and that didn't go down well with the Overseer. He's been coming down hard on them, and that's where it stands now. At least until you walked in here. That was never supposed to happen. That was the Overseer's fault. Really? Well, that would explain a few things, all right. It's a good thing you're here after all. After that night, a lot of your friends started thinking, if it's safe to go outside, why stay down here forever? And that's not the sort of thing the Overseer likes to hear. Things have gotten pretty tense. Dad would be horrified to know all that if he were still alive. I'm... I'm sorry to hear that. Regardless of how things turned out down here, he was a good friend. I always figured he'd do well outside. Matter of fact, a lot of folks started thinking he had the right idea. He usually did. So, if it was safe out there, why stay down here forever? Well, the Overseer didn't like that one bit and started cracking down on that sort of thought. Guess he didn't plan on you coming back. So what now? I probably ought to put you under arrest and take you into the Overseer, but frankly, I know better than to try that. Meanwhile, some of your old friends think opening the vault is a good idea. I bet those rebels would like a word with you. Now more than ever. Of course, if you want, you can just walk away as if you were never here. Out of respect for your dad, I won't even tell anyone I saw you. Well, let me through. I've got some work to do. I can't do that. Not officially, at least. As much as some of the rebels would like to talk with you, the Overseer said you weren't welcome back. Of course, if you survived whatever's out there, none of us could stop you if you really wanted to cause problems. But I'd prefer if you don't. But out of respect to your dad, I could turn a blind eye. You could slip out and say you were never here. I won't tell a soul. Wait, why don't the rebels just leave? It's not that they want to leave. It's that they want to open the door and interact with the rest of the world. But that would risk the whole vault. Or we can leave. This is too messed up. I'm leaving again. Just pretend I never came back. Well, I can't blame you. I'll change the passwords behind you and we'll figure out a way to work things out for ourselves. We've been it on our own for this long. I'm sure this'll blow over in time too. Best of luck to you out there, kid. Don't worry about us. If we turn around and walk out the door... The door to Vault 101 closes behind us and never opens again. Or we can promise to take care of the situation. I'll go see what I can do about all of this. Well, okay. Just be careful down here. The vault's changed, I tell you. If we don't remember the layout to Vault 101, we can have Officer Armstrong lead us inside. Can you lead me somewhere? I guess you've had a lot on your mind since you were here last. Where do you want to go? I need to see Amada. Lead me to her. Okay. Follow me. With that, Officer Armstrong puts away his weapon and leads us towards the western door. He leads us down the stairs and through the door to the Vault 101 atrium. But at the end of the hallway, he tells us to stop. Uh-oh. Wait here. This doesn't look good. You know I can't do that, Freddy. Now get back down below before I have to do something we'll both regret. What? You're gonna lock me up like you did to Brotch? You can't cage a tunnel snake, man, because we rule! Stay back! Holy crap! Don't you know enough to stay away? You almost shot Freddy. I didn't mean to fire. I really didn't. I just wanted to scare him off. But he had a knife. I can't be too careful with those rebels. Tell me about the rebels. I tell you, I'm scared of them. I never know when they're gonna try something dangerous. What happened down here? I lost my poor wife Agnes is what happened. And all the chaos and fighting, her old ticker just couldn't take it anymore. 
I have to go now. Yes, you do. Jeez. No friendly welcome? Okay, I see how it is. Heading back to Armstrong. I really shouldn't be seen talking with you, you know. What do you want? Could you escort me to Amada? I need to talk to her about all this. As chance would have it, she was one of the first people to talk about life outside the vault after you left. No surprise. She always did like you. I hope you can talk some sense into her. Or maybe the two of you can come up with some other plan. Just be careful about it. Armstrong leads us towards the cafeteria, and as we go, we see the overseer staring at us from his overseer's window. On the other side of the cafeteria door, we find Pepper Gomez enjoying a cigar in the cafeteria. You don't belong here anymore. Can't you just leave us alone? Tell me about the rebels. Those kids are risking our entire vault just because they're bored. It's horrible. What happened down here? The bugs were horrible. But my family was pretty lucky. But then my Freddy went and got caught up with those idiot rebels. I gotta go now? Yes, you do. Jeez, what is it with these people? We're just here trying to help. It's as if they blame us for all of this. Armstrong leads us out of the cafeteria and then turns right to head up towards the clinic. Amada's up there, in the clinic, with the rest of them. I'd take you closer, but they don't get along with security. Good luck. And with that, Armstrong leaves. So it looks like we are on our own, heading upstairs. We round a corner and bypass a bunch of furniture barricades to find Butch. Damn, look who's come waltzing back into the vault. It takes some real balls coming back here after everything you and your dad screwed up. But if you've got to be back, might as well make yourself useful. You got to help us. What makes you think I came back to help you? Because you're a goody two-shoes, right? You get off on helping people in trouble. Isn't that why you saved my mom? I bet she'd thank you herself, but she and I ain't exactly on speaking terms at the moment. At least, not when she's sober. But I tell you, your old man had the right idea. I can't stand it down here anymore. You gotta help me get out. Help? What kind of help? What sort of help do you think I mean? You must have heard about the changes since you left, right? The deaths, the lies, the whole overseer lockdown thing? Ringing any bells? Man, they'd have rushed in here long ago if they didn't know I stole one of their guns from when they issued martial law. Anyway, you gotta help us get out of here. You gotta help me get out of here. Why do you need to get out of here so badly? Because anything up there has got to be better than a lifetime of the same thing down here. Think about it, man. Down here, I'll always be stuck with the same job, with the same food, with the same people forever. You and your dad had the right idea. Get out of this pit and make your own life. Don't worry. I'm trying to help the entire vault. Man, screw the entire vault. What about me? Even these rebels just want the option to go outside for lousy trading and stuff. I just want to get the hell out of here for good. Why stay here and be stuck as a barber for my entire life when I could go out there and make my own choices? Butch, what do you do here in the vault? The damn goat said I'm supposed to be a hairdresser, but that ain't me. I'm a barber, you got that? There's a difference. Oh, that's right. Uh, can I have a haircut? I'm gonna barber the hell out of your hair. <laughs> He's ready to cut our hair, good old Butch. Well, what do you think you're gonna do outside, Butch? I'll start a gang, of course. Why, it'll be the toughest, coolest, badassest gang the Wasteland's ever seen. Hey, play your cards right, maybe I'll even let you join it, huh? Oh, of course, a new gang. I bet you're mole rat chow before you make it one day out there. Yeah, well, get us out of here and we'll see, won't we? You have no idea how many gangs of idiot raiders are out there. Well, they ain't seen nothing like me yet. Butcher's gonna take that wasteland by storm. Hey, I'm already in the Tunnel Snakes. You gave me the jacket and everything. Yeah, but I'm thinking it'll be a new gang. We ain't gonna just be in tunnels, you know. Besides, there's gonna be a lot more people who want to join. Competition's gonna be tough. Why should I help you, Butch? Because you've always been a goody two-shoes. So when I need help, it's what you're gonna do, right? You're gonna help Amada anyway, right? Just make it so we can leave the vault, and I'll leave and never bother you again. So what happened that night? I heard old Stanley complaining a lot of the stuff down in the reactor got fried pretty bad. Uh, nothing too bad, yet. But he's always worrying we'll lose air filtration or whatever. 
Of course, if that happened, guess we'd all have to leave the vault then, huh? I gotta go, Butch. Come back if you need something. Hmm. So stuff down in the reactor room got fried. We'll have to remember that for later. Continuing forward, we can turn the corner and head into the old classroom. Here we find many of the young people we grew up with meandering about, including Freddy Gomez. I never thought you'd be back. Hey, good to see you again. I can't believe they almost shot you. I tell you, those guards are getting nastier every day. One of these days is going to turn real ugly. But I'll be ready for it. Tell me about the rebels. The overseer thinks he's in charge of us just because it's his job? Well, nuts to that. We do what we want, and we want to open the vault. What happened down here? Paul got bit real bad by some of those rad roaches, but he thought he could tough it out. If we'd had a doctor to treat him, he might still be here. Oh no, Paul died? He was the only boy kind to us during our birthday party. Then, Christine comes in. Wow, you're back. Tell me about the rebels, Christine. I wouldn't call us rebels. I mean, we don't agree with the Overseer, but we still love the vault. We just want to try going outside, too. What happened down here? Mom and little Monica got caught in the fires. I tried to get them out. I really did. But it was just too hot. I know it wasn't your fault, but my dad doesn't think as highly of you. You wouldn't want to hear what he said he'd do to your dad, either. Then we find Susie Mack. You're alive! Tell me about the Rebels. I hate that this whole thing has turned us against our families, but we just can't keep living down here forever. I mean, look at this place. What happened down here? A lot of security got wounded, and worse. In all the confusion, we still don't know who's responsible for some of them. Golly, so the rebels even wounded some of the security? This place has turned into a war zone. Heading towards Dad's old clinic, we find Amada. Oh my god, you're back! You got my message and actually came back! Hey, can you hurry up? I got lots to do. I guess you must have more important things waiting for you outside, so I'll make this quick. When you left, we realized we could leave the vault. But my father won't stand for it, and it's just getting worse down here. He won't listen to us, but he can't just ignore you. So we need your help. I need your help. Don't flatter yourself, Amada. I'm just here to take care of a few loose ends. What? Have you gone crazy from radiation or sunstroke or whatever they've got out there? This place is a police state and we're on the edge of civil war. If you won't help for me, at least do it for your home. Oh, I just happened to be in the neighborhood, so I thought I'd stop by. I missed your sense of humor, but I really don't think this is the time for jokes. We're in real trouble. And your help could make all the difference. So could you please take this seriously for me? I came as soon as I heard you were in trouble. Oh, thank you. Everything's gone crazy since you left. And now that you're back, you can help set things straight. Let's not be hasty. I need to know more before I make any decisions. What? You think they've got some explanation for their side of the story? You think you can trust anything they say? All those people died because my father claimed he wanted to keep the vault safe and secure. But all this time, that's been a lie! Oh, nice job. I'm gone for a bit and you screw the whole place up. Don't you try to blame this on us! It was all my father and his cronies who tried to keep us from ever going outside. I may have left, but this is still where I grew up. I can't leave it in chaos. Chaos doesn't even cover it. It's a nightmare down here. You saved my life back then, Amara. The least I can do is help out now. I just wish we could have saved more people. Jonas and, and the Hannons and so many others died that night. It was bad enough they died because my father was trying to keep the door closed. But then I found out it was all to protect a lie. I found out the vault wasn't always closed. They've lied to us about it for our entire lives. What? How did you find that out? After that night... I heard Wally's father say we should never have taken you or your dad into the vault. I found out the vault used to be open, but for some reason, they closed it off when we were babies and swore to hide that it had ever happened. But keeping that lie meant Jonas's death. And even though we know the truth, the Overseer still won't let us make our own decisions. If we got the armored Vault 101 suit from Moira Brown, we find an option to say, well, that explains why I found an old Vault 101 suit outside. I heard we sent a couple of scouts outside long ago. Maybe the suit was theirs. The vault was open for a while, but for some reason they closed it off when we were babies and everyone swore to deny it had ever happened. But then Jonas died, 
and they're keeping us locked in here, all to protect that fantasy of remaining untainted by the outside world. Actually, this is my dad's fault for leaving. He started this whole mess. Your dad didn't kill Jonas. Your dad didn't lock down the vault. Your dad isn't the one keeping us from leaving right now. My dad did, and we need to take a stand against him. I hear some of you have been hoping to go outside. That's pretty crazy too. Are you honestly comparing maybe we should look for help with stay in an underground bunker all your life or I'll kill you? Obviously, I don't know what's out there, but it can't hurt to take a look, right? You have no idea how good you've got it down here. What the hell do you mean? Take a look around. If we weren't dying down here before that night, we're definitely on our way now. How much worse could it be if we tried to leave? There has to be something out there worth finding. It's a dead world out there. You're better off down here, even with a madman. I... I just can't believe you. If we stay here, we'll just wither away over the years. There has to be something for us out there. But we don't even have that chance while my father's got the place locked down. Please, something has to be done. You know that better than anyone. There's more out there than we ever imagined. Good, bad, and in between. And all this time, we're living in a tiny world that's been falling apart for 200 years. If we don't take a chance out there, we're just going to die down here. But none of that can happen while my father's got the place locked down. Please, something has to be done. You know that better than anyone. There are other survivors. Some are even doing better than the vault. That's why we need to be able to go outside. We can trade with them, get supplies and things we both need. Even just to meet new people. But none of that can happen while my father's got the place locked down. Please, something has to be done. You know that better than anyone. So why don't you just leave? It's not difficult, especially now. It's not that simple. Just because Butch wants to leave this place behind doesn't mean the rest of us want to go away forever. It's our home, and we want to stay here. It's just that, since you left, we started thinking maybe the outside wasn't something to be afraid of. But we can't even suggest going outside to communicate or trade at all. Not with the Overseer keeping us trapped down here. You need to stop him. Sounds like he's gone crazy with power and needs to be stopped. You're absolutely right. It's not like we want to abandon the vault or anything. Well, Butch does, but he's too big a coward to go out on his own. Most of us had accepted that the outside was certain death, and things would always stay the same down here. But now we know they don't have to be. After all, it was enough to get you and your dad to leave, so there must be something good out there. Why is the Overseer doing this? I just don't know. Maybe he thinks he's protecting us, but all he's really doing is condemning us. I thought parents were supposed to want a better world for their children. Well, there's a new world waiting right outside that door. And we're not going to give up until we can reach it. What happened that night? The real problems came after you two left. The injured had nobody to turn to since our doctor had run off and his assistant had died. Now, we've got to rely on that old Mr. Handy for most of our medical needs. And he hasn't exactly got the best bedside manner. Ever had an examination from someone with cold, metal pincers? You don't want to. Why don't you just leave? There's not much security. Don't you get it? We don't want to abandon the vault. We want to open it. We still want this to be our home, but we want to get supplies from outside. Trading, exploring, anything's better than just hiding down here. The more I hear, the less I want to be involved at all. I'm leaving forever. You're leaving us? You're leaving me? I guess what my father said was right. Now that you've been out there, you've stopped caring about anyone but yourself. We don't need your help. We can take care of ourselves. You can just get out and never come back. She sounds upset. Talking to her again. It sounds like you've already abandoned us. Did you change your mind or are you just here to make fun of us? I just wanted to say goodbye before I left. Oh, save it. If you really cared about us, you'd be helping instead of leaving us to our fate. But please, don't let us naive vault dwellers keep you from your exciting world above. I'm sure we'll be fine and tombed down here forever. Or we can say, I think I have a solution for the vault's troubles. I certainly hope so. We can't keep going on like this. I swear, I'll stop your father and his guards. Just watch. You will? Thank goodness for that. No matter what I say, he just doesn't listen. He just spends all day up in his office. But you've actually been outside, so you can tell him what it's like with first-hand experience. 
Just please don't do anything rash or hurt him, all right? I still owe him a lot for that night. Don't expect to see him again. No, please! I know he's hurt and lied to us, but he's still my father. I just want him to stop keeping us locked up, that's all. I know I can't stop you, but I know somewhere in there, my father just thinks he's watching out for us, so please, please don't hurt him. Don't hurt him? Are you crazy? He tried to kill you. Well, yes, but he may have done some terrible things, but he's still my father, you know? Please, for my sake, don't hurt him. Sorry, I'm not promising anything. He'll be stopped, one way or another. But he's still my father. He may have made terrible choices that night, but he's the same person who's always looked out for us before then. Maybe he has some reason. Just please don't kill him. We've already had too many deaths. You know violence isn't my style, Amada. Don't worry. I should have remembered. I was just worried. I don't know, maybe your time outside had changed you. Thanks, and good luck talking to him. Let me know when you change his mind. Now we have to confront the Overseer. But before we do, we see Old Lady Palmer. Oh, it's good to see you're back from outside. It can be dangerous out there for someone your age. Tell me about the Rebels. Oh dear, we aren't asking for anything special. The vault's been open before, but for some reason everyone tries to pretend it wasn't. I guess they try to forget the poor souls who never came back from out there. What happened down here? My poor grandson Jonas died is what happened. They say it was just an accident and all the confusion, but I know it was the Overseer. I gotta go now. Oh, please be careful. Oh, I didn't know Jonas was her grandson. Opening the clinic door, we find Andy hovering above a corpse. Ah, another patient. What's it to be, eh? Appendectomy? Tonsillectomy? Hysterectomy? So what's your take on this whole situation, Andy? Ah, human problems for human heart. I don't trouble myself with such petty affairs. My work is my life. And, as you can see, I've been quite busy. Yeah, I can see that. Um, what happened? All this blood. Ah, yes, a rather unfortunate incident. In all the commotion, Miss Beatrice suffered a rather bad sprain in her left toe. The big one. Obviously, I had no choice but to amputate. The leg. Yeah, I'm sorry to say the operation was uh, not a uh, success. Wait, they made you the doctor? But of course, with your father's departure from the vault and Jonas's untimely demise, the overseer had to take swift action. <laughs> and so he named me the new vault medical practitioner. A marvelous decision, if I do say so myself. I am fully equipped, after all. If you're the new doctor, can you heal me? Um, actually, uh, no. I'm afraid I've been, uh, what's the human term? Ah, uh, uh, yeah, uh, fired. I've been reassigned to cleaning detail. My first duty is, somewhat ironically, cleaning the clinic. Ah, but surgery was fun while it lasted. Okay, gotta go now. Of course, of course. Don't let me keep you. The left big toe? He butchered her right leg. Beatrice, she gave us a birthday poem. I mean, it wasn't very good, but she didn't deserve this. Before we leave, we can loot the medicine bobblehead from the clinic if we never got it when we were here last. And if we look behind the framed Bible quote, our mother's favorite verse, we discover that there's a safe hidden behind there. If we pick it, inside we find the schematics for the rocket launcher, as well as a stash of 300 caps. I guess dad just didn't have time to snatch this before he fled the vault. We also find a holotape, Home Sweet Home. Well, here we are, nestled all safe and snug inside Vault 101. It's so cold down here, colder still with Catherine gone. Oh, Catherine, I so wish you were here with me. How the hell am I supposed to do this by myself? Live down in this hole, take care of our child. But this is our life now. So I guess I'd better get used to it. The overseer who runs the place is an overbearing bully, but I've dealt with worse.
It's so weird hearing his voice after everything that happened. To find the Overseer, we can either walk there ourselves or have Officer Armstrong take us. I think I'd like to have a talk with the Overseer. Take me to him. I hope you know what you're doing. I don't think he's going to be happy to see you. Follow close to me and I'll escort you down to him. As we recall, his office is above the atrium. At the top level of the atrium, we can open the door to admin, but as we pass through the systems room... You never should have left, kid. Now we'll make sure nobody ever leaves again. Thought I heard something. Officer Wilkins opens fire, and we're forced to kill him. If we do, on his body, we not only find a finger, I guess he really was a bad guy, but we also find a jail cell password, which might come in handy later. Once we arrive in the Overseer's office, we can tell Officer Armstrong that we can take it from here. If you want to go on alone, it's your call. Just don't stir up too much trouble down here, okay? You may be used to the outside, but this is all the world some of us have. Now, we must confront the Overseer. Well, I see you've returned. Done with the dust and ruins of the wasteland, are you? Given up looking for Daddy? Thought you could just slink back in like a teen missing curfew? Well, that's too bad. You have no future in this vault. You're tainted. If we killed the Overseer while we were fleeing Vault 101, instead of Amada's father, we find that Alan Mack has become the Overseer. Even though Alan Mack's dialogue is very different from Amada's father, with Amada's father as Overseer, we have more options for how to resolve this quest. So we'll go through the experience as if we never killed Amada's father, therefore leaving him the Overseer now that we have returned. I may be tainted, we can say, but you're dead. I expected nothing more from you. With that, he turns hostile, as does his entire security team. That's one way to make this decision, but assuming we want to negotiate first, instead we can say, I'm tainted? You're the crazy bastard who murdered Jonas. I assume you're talking about the unpleasantness when you left? Yes? Jonas and your father were endangering the future success of this vault and the safety of its residents. I did what I had to do to keep them from destroying all we had achieved here. I only wish I could have prevented it from happening at all. With your leadership, no one in this vault has much of a future. That would be where you're wrong, young man. By locking down this vault, I'm protecting its future. In fact, I was protecting its future when I had to make those unpleasant choices the night you and your father abandoned us. I only wish I could have stopped your father before he left. If anyone's to blame for the unpleasantness, it's him. I'm sick of your lies. You murdered Jonas in cold blood. First of all, I didn't kill Jonas. I commanded Chief Hannon to do so. But only because it had to be done. Jonas was going to leave with your father. If he left, others would have left to join them. And they'd all vanish into the wastes, never to return. And with our numbers so depleted, we wouldn't be able to last beyond another generation. Assuming our expatriates didn't lead raiders to us first. Don't try to justify your murders and lies. They were never threats. Spoken like someone who's never had to make difficult decisions. Like someone who's never had to lead. Jonas was leaving with your father. Their departure would lead to others leaving as well. And before you know it, half of the vault would be gone. And then, our home, the last safe, pure bastion of humanity, would be reduced to a lonely handful of aging holdouts, too few to continue. Do you have any idea why my father left the vault in the first place? I've spent many nights asking myself exactly that. He certainly didn't tell me before he left. I blame myself, really. I should have known better than to let him enter our home in the first place. He certainly showed his true colors in the end. Were he raised in the cleanliness of our vault, perhaps your father would have shown more dedication to the important things in life. Just as well that he left, we mustn't let humanity's last pure specimens be sullied with his type. Pure? It won't ever be pure while you're in charge. <laughs> Hardly. If anything, the only thing keeping it safe and pure is my strict supervision. But I wouldn't expect you to understand. You were never really one of us anyway. Your father was from the Wastes. 
and that's where you belong. I think our meaningful discussion is at an end. I'm going to have to ask you to leave and never return. But death's always an option, too. Yeah, he was an asshole, all right. We're all better off without him. I'm glad we're in agreement there. He left us all behind and caused quite a deal of trouble. All because he apparently got tired of the vault. As useful as his services were, in the end, he just wasn't willing to make sacrifices for the community. At least my father didn't hide from the outside his whole life. No, but he didn't risk bringing you out into it either. You have to wonder, is that why he left you behind? He wanted to know you were someplace safe? And then, like a fool, you squandered the greatest gift he ever left you. Lay off the evil banter. I'm just curious about your side of all of this. Really? And here I had expected you to be full of bullets and bravado, but short on brains. Perhaps you've grown up since you left our vault. I regret the unfortunate events of that night, but I'm afraid that once your father left us, they were unavoidable. The sad truth is that his actions presented a real and direct threat to the future success of our vault. And so, regrettably, they had to be opposed. What do you mean by the vault's future success? Ah, you're paying attention. Good for you. These vaults were designed to be safe havens for humanity, you see. But more than that, they were designed to test and protect us. And none more so than our Vault 101. We are to be a pure and protected breed of humans, never tainted by the ravages of the war above. I had no idea Vault 101 was so important. I just thought it was a fancy bunker. No! The vaults have been so much more! But only the Overseers have known the truth. And we've passed it down very carefully. I had hoped to tell Amata when she took over. But with the way things are now, that doesn't seem likely to happen. But if you could convince her and the Rebels to give up this foolish demand to leave, then we can return to our Vault's vital mission. You're not protecting your people, you're destroying them. Can't you see that? I'm afraid you're the short-sighted one here. I'm simply keeping them safe and untouched by the war above. The real danger are the rebels and insurgents who insist on risking all of our lives just to die out there in the wastes. If they weren't trying to throw our lives away like that, we could go back to the peaceful life we once had. Everyone would be happy again. I think you've made a good point, but things still need to change down here. I'm trying to save my people. Possibly the only pure, safe humans left in the world. Don't destroy humanity's last chance just because you don't like the choices I've had to make to protect it. The vault doesn't have to be isolated in order to keep its residents safe. And what makes you so certain about that? I can't imagine you're still so naive after spending time in that hell outside. None of them know what the outside is like, and most of them would die out there. Then the rest of us inside would eventually die out too. I won't risk all of our lives just for a few people's passing fancy of taking a wasteland vacation. I hope you can understand that. You know, I just don't care anymore. Let me leave and I'll never come back. As I always suspected, you never cared about the vault. Now that you've been outside, you're nothing more than an ignorant savage. But by all means, feel free to see yourself out. I'm sure you know the way. Or we can continue by asking, why are they rebelling? I just don't know. Don't they realize how dangerous it is out there? But instead they would throw away the safety of the vault's isolation just to follow in your footsteps. I can't allow them to do that to themselves or to the rest of us. After talking with the rebels, we find an option to say, look, the rebels are upset because you lied to them about the outside. They have to understand that we did that to keep them from going outside and getting killed. To keep them from making the same mistake our generation did when we were their age. Some of us already lost loved ones out there long ago. We won't lose any more today. I believe I have the solution to the vault's problems. To fix what you started? Go ahead and humor me. 
I still owe you for Jonas. Now shut up and die, you son of a gun. I expected nothing less from you. And again, he turns violent, as does his security team. If we elect to go this route, we can return to the rebels. We find that Amada has moved to the classroom. I just heard. The overseer, my... my father is dead. What's more, some of the people are saying I should be the new overseer. It's just all so sudden. It shouldn't be a surprise. I said I'd kill him, and I did. You bastard! That's still my father you're talking about! As new overseer, my first action is to banish you from Vault 101 forever. Whatever sort of friend you used to be, the Wastelands changed you. Now, get out of my vault, murderer! Or we can say, that's the way these things go. Now, do the right thing for your vault. Oh, I will, believe me. We can open up limited trade with nearby settlements and other areas, and see the world we've been missing. But it's still important that I protect our vault and keep the people within it safe from the dangers of the Wasteland. Even when those dangers have helped us in the past. And that makes the rest of this even harder. Or we can say, I'm sorry about your father, but now the Vault can have a real leader. I'm sure you did everything you could to find another way. I know how stubborn he is, how, how stubborn he was. But you're right. I don't have time to grieve just because I lost my father. The Vault needs a leader now. That makes the rest of this even harder. I did what had to be done, and I'd do it again if necessary. I realize that, and I don't blame you. If you hadn't been here, maybe one of us would have done the same. Uh-oh, I've got a bad feeling I know where this is going. You saved us, but that doesn't change the fact that you killed one of us to do it. And I can't let that sort of thing stand here. I guess it's a bit familiar. You've already been forced out of the vault once before. At least now you know what's out there. I'm sorry. You're a hero, and you have to leave. And with that, Amada banishes us from the vault. And this is such a great touch, because the words she uses here are the same words that Jakorian uses. If you don't know that reference, then you should watch my series on the full story of Fallout 1. You can watch that series by clicking here. Or, instead of killing the Overseer, we can side with him. I'll put a stop to the rebels. Just let me have a word with them. Hmm. You always have held a certain sway with them that neither I nor my guards have enjoyed. All right, then. Go to my daughter and convince her to leave this rebellious nonsense behind. Now we have to head back to the rebels. But before we do, we can explore the overseer's office here. Checking out his terminal, we find two new entries since we read it last. In the first one, view external contact report, the vault recently received unexpected radio contact over the governmental vault tech frequency from an organization calling itself the Enclave. Governmental codes are valid according to the vault's ancient records, and the Enclave put forth an offer of amnesty and unity with the official remnants of the American government in exchange for access to the vault and its data stores. They claim that our vault passwords no longer match their records, preventing them from extending their offer in person. After brief negotiation, I have refused entrance to this Enclave. I cannot trust my vault and its inhabitants to an unknown factor, much less one that would so gallantly suggest abandoning our vault's great mission. All the more reason to prevent the rebels from opening the vault to the likes of them. Holy cow, the Overseer protected Vault 101 from an invasion by the Enclave. And it surely would have been an invasion, as we recall what happened the last time a vault opened its door to greet the Enclave. In the next one, View Security Dossiers, we find an entry on the Rebels. An alliance of the Rebels has formed in my vault, dedicated to the wholly destructive goal of reopening the vault to the outside world. Amata and Edwin Broch are the leaders of the band, with those ridiculous tunnel snakes making up its muscle, along with a handful of other youths and naive idealists. Attempts to isolate and demoralize the group are proceeding apace. Edwin Broch has been jailed for his attempt to lead a direct attempt to open the vault's door, and their members have holed up in the old clinic and schoolroom. Their dwindling food and proximity to the dangerous Dr. Andy are sure to drain the morale from their rebellion until they give up and are welcomed back into our happy family again. So the Overseer jailed Broch? Our old teacher? We'll have to do something about that. 
And the next one is an entry about Amada. It pains me dearly to know that Amada is behind the rebellious element in my vault. If she weren't their leader, it would be a simple matter to break their spirits and bring them back in line with the vault's time-proven isolation plan. But with her as a central figure in their rebellion, I must refrain from the more persuasive tactics at security's disposal. I will not repeat the mistakes of that night again. The vault cannot afford it, and I cannot bear to drive my daughter further away from me. Despite everything, I take great pride in her natural talent for leadership. When she inevitably comes around, I feel she will make a worthy successor to the position of overseer. So the man is both disappointed and proud that his daughter is leading the rebels. The other entries are all the same, and we notice that the entry about the Enclave has been added to our Pip-Boy as a note. Now we need to see if we can find Brach. Heading to security, we can use the code we got on the corpse of Officer Wilkins, or take a duplicate code, which we find in one of the lockers, to access the security terminal, which we can use to unlock the door. Or we can pick the door. It's locked with an average lock. And on the other side of the door is Edwin Brach. It's been a while, kid. I guess the goat couldn't have predicted how you'd turn out, could it? Remind me to add a question about rescuing your teacher from the vault jail. If the vault ever goes back to normal, that is. By the way, while I was in there, I heard some worrying things from the guards. What did you hear from the guards? I heard one of the guards talking about some sort of plan to raid Amada and the rest of us. I didn't hear anything else, but I think he read it on the security terminal. So maybe you can find more there. I'm sure it's bad news for us all. Tell me about the rebels. Most of them are just kids who are caught up in the idea of seeing the world. But I know we've got to actually open the vault if we want to survive. Otherwise, we're just going to dwindle away down here until it's all too late. What happened down here? It was pretty rough, I'll tell you. I know a lot of folks blame your dad. But I know he didn't mean to cause all that. Don't blame him or yourself. I have to go now. Watch yourself down here. Mr. Brotch walks off to rejoin the rebels, but he told us some worrying news. Is the security team really planning to attack the rebels? Accessing the nearby desk terminal, we can read the note, Confidential. Confidential top-level security only, from some unnamed chief officer, subject Raid on Rebels. In light of increased agitation from the rebel elements, I have come to the conclusion that we can no longer afford to be merciful to this scum. While some may hold out hope for a peaceful resolution, it's only a matter of time before they decide to take the fight to us, or worse yet, our families. I propose a midnight raid into their compound. Live ammo, zero tolerance make an example of the first two who fight back, and the rest will fall in line. We may lose a kid or two, but we'll save the vault as a whole. And that's what counts. You are not to inform the Overseer and some of our softer security guards about this plan, as they will only object and ensure our defeat. Once the deal's done, they'll see it was worth the price. This'll show those scum what happens when you step out of line in our vault. So it's true. The security team is planning to raid the rebels, and the Enclave is trying to get in the vault. It's just bad news everywhere. We find that these raid plans were added to our Pip-Boy, and at last we understand why Amada's Pip-Boy radio frequency disappears if we don't respond to it in time. If we don't respond, this event happens. The security team raids the rebels and likely kills a few, restoring order to the vault, keeping everyone quiet and buried underground forever. But now we need to head back down to the classroom to convince Amada to leave. On our way, we bump into a few more vault dwellers. Why won't you just leave us alone? You've done enough damage. Oh boy, are you in trouble. Tell me about the rebels, Wally. What do you expect from idiots like them? I'm just glad I was done with Butch's stupid gang before they got involved in all this. What happened down here? You should have seen my pop. He personally saved old Stanley. But guess you wouldn't know what it's like to have a hero for a dad, would you? So, Wally doesn't count himself among the rebels. Next, we find Butch's mother, Ellen Deloria. You're back again? Tell me about the rebels. They're a bunch of hellions, that's what they are. I'm at my wit's end about them. I really am. What happened down here? It's all kind of blurry for me. But I hear I owe you for saving me. But don't expect much. The whole thing was your dad's fault in the first place. Great. Some thanks. And then we bump into Officer Mac. This is the guy who killed Jonas, but he's not hostile. Why won't you just leave us alone? You've done enough damage. 
I sure didn't expect you to show your face here again. Tell me about the rebels. I expect as much from some of those idiot kids and batty old Palmer, but I expected more sense from Broch. What happened down here? We were so busy fighting those bugs, there wasn't anyone to help put out the fires that started after you left. It was horrible. At length, we arrive back at the clinic. Glad to see you here. I wasn't taken away in the night for what that's worth. That's about the best news I've got to report. Well, I guess it could be worse, but if I know Father, he's not just going to change his mind on this. Will do, Amada. You watch out for yourself, too. Will do. You, too. We now have to deal with the rebels for the Overseer. And, of course, one way to do so is to simply kill Amada. Help! But if we do, many of the other rebels turn hostile, forcing us to kill some of them as well. You're asking for it, pal. Ow! No! You just killed him! Like... No! Help. Whoa! Someone's been calmed down! No. Once the rebels are taken care of, we can report our success to the Overseer. I just heard about your so-called solution. I should have you killed where you stand. But obviously we simply can't kill a wasteland monster like you. The best we can do is offer you a sacrifice to send you on your way. At least with you gone, our home can return to some semblance of peace, even if it came at a tragic cost. And like Amada, he banishes us. But instead of killing the rebels, we can try to convince them to leave. Amada, you need to understand the dangers outside and why you should stay here. What exactly do you mean by that? I'll find a way to convince you. Just wait. The person you should be convincing is the Overseer. Go talk with him. If we read the Overseer's terminal, we find an option to say, the Overseer is actually protecting you from a deadly group called the Enclave. You mean there really are deadly threats out there? It hasn't all just been lies to keep us down here? I guess I never thought that was actually true, but I can tell you really mean it about the Enclave. I couldn't risk leading them to the vault. Or we can pass a speech check to say isolation keeps the vault safe. It's insane to give that up. It is? Even with a crazy dictator running the show? I guess we do have renewable food and water, impenetrable defenses, and a wealth of active technology. Those must be rare outside, huh? Don't be an idiot. Stay here where you're safe. I'm not an idiot for wanting to leave, but I guess I wouldn't be the only one leaving, and I couldn't risk leading others to their death like that. I can't let you go and die out there in the wastes. I'm not afraid of dying, but if I leave, others will try to follow, and I couldn't live with their deaths on my conscience. Okay, you win. Go ahead and tell my father that we'll stop trying to leave the vault. You and he are right. Thanks for watching out for us. We'll all miss you. No matter how we convince her, if we do, we gain karma, and we can head back to the Overseer to tell him the good news. I hear that you've had a little chat with our rebellious elements. It seems I underestimated your persuasive skills. I applaud your restraint. Violence only weakens our community, and now is no time for weakness. Once again, there is a firm hand in control, and all will be well in Vault 101. I suppose you'll want some sort of payment for your aid. Returning to stay in the safety of the vault is reward enough. Did you really think you'd be allowed to stay? Yes, you've saved the vault, to be sure. And thus, probably the last pure humans in the world. All the more reason to keep you from returning to our community and polluting it with the taint of outside barbarism. Now, reconsider your request and pick a reward you can take with you when you return outside. Wastelander. And he won't let us stay either. I'll take your Gek and whatever technology you can spare. I'm afraid that, instead of a Gek, our vault was supplied with technology better suited to functioning indefinitely. But take this modified utility jumpsuit. It seems the rebels thought it would be useful when they left. Obviously, that won't be happening now. Thank you for saving our vault. Now, you'll have to leave. In which case we get a modified Vault 101 jumpsuit, which we'll talk about more later. Or we can say, I'll take my payment in food and ammo. Ah, of course. The basic currency of a lawless society. Maybe you'd like a few pointed sticks and fighting dogs as well? We don't have much ammunition down here, but we should be able to spare some packaged meals. Here, perhaps it'll be of some comfort to you once you return to the wastes. Now go. 
in which case we get some food and ammunition. At this point, we can be stubborn. I'll never leave Vault 101 again in my life. I really don't recommend that sort of ultimatum. If you leave now, we can simply lock down the door controls and everyone can be happy. But if you insist, uh, we can always toss your corpse out the gate after you're killed. The choice is yours. Goodbye. And with that, he walks away. Or we can say, fine, you bastards can rot and die down here. Spoken with all the eloquence I'd expect from a wastelander. Farewell, and feel free to enjoy your brutal hellscape above, savage. Please, pass along my farewell to everyone in the vault. I will. I know there are some that will miss you. Much as there are still some that miss your father. Not me, of course, but some of the others. Sentimental fools. But you've restored peace to the vault, and in that way, you're a hero. And you have to leave. Thank you, and goodbye, Wastelander. And with that, he gives us a similar parting message to the one Amada gave us, and the one Jacorian gave the Vault Dweller. Or we can side with the Rebels. Instead of agreeing to go talk with the Rebels, we can say, The Rebels are right. You need to open the Vault. Oh, do you? What makes you think you know how better to protect this Vault? I'll find a way to convince you. Just wait. I deeply doubt it. But your naive ramblings do have a certain entertainment value. If we read the security terminal and learned that security is planning to raid the rebels, we find an option to say, you can't even keep your security in line. They're planning to raid the rebels. Damn it! I told them I won't let this degenerate into violence again. The vault simply can't take the instability anymore. But maybe you're right. They simply can't stand the pressure anymore. And now the purity and perfection of my vault is crumbling all around me. Or we can pass a speech check. You simply don't have enough people to stay isolated down here forever. I admit, in the 200 years since the war, our numbers have dwindled a little. But we have enough genetic diversity for a few more generations. My god, you're right. We won't last another hundred years whether or not we get supplies from the outside. We're the last bastion of pure humanity, and we're doomed. The only mission your vault ever had was keeping its residents alive. (laughs) And you expect me to believe that the only way to do that is to let them travel out in the wastes and mingle with those savages? I suppose it would allow them to stay alive, and we could still keep the vault as our safe haven. But it'd require a new type of leader. And I know only one person with the proper attitude to do that. I'll inform my daughter Amata that she is the new overseer. Effective immediately. Humanity isn't about pure genetics. It's about never giving up hope, even now. (laughs) I wish I could share your optimism, but I suppose you have a point in your blathering way. My way won't save our vault's mission, but if I let them contact the outside world, I might be able to save its inhabitants. But I'm not the one to lead them in that. I'm stepping down as overseer. I'll tell Amata that I can think of no more appropriate leader than she. With that, we gain karma, and the overseer races out of his office and tracks down Amata in the clinic. Amata, everyone, listen closely. After a discussion with your friend, I've made an important decision. In my attempts to keep us all safe, I have been, perhaps... Overzealous. Lives have been lost, but perhaps worse than that, lives have been stopped. And in my attempts to keep you safe, I have kept you from growing up. I know I have made these mistakes, and I would make them again if I had to do so. That is why I cannot remain your overseer. Father! Amata, I appoint you overseer in my place. You've proven you have what it takes to make hard choices for the good of the vaults. I'm just sorry I didn't understand that earlier. Consider it one of many mistakes I've made. Thank you, Father. I'll do my best to keep us all safe, inside the vault and beyond. You're welcome, my dear. And now, if you'll excuse me, I feel quite worn down. 
We'll deal with the details soon, in private. Until then, I'm sure there are people waiting to congratulate you. I... I just heard. My father says he's stepping down as overseer. He won't tell me why, but I have to assume it's something you said to him. He didn't even realize how wrong he was, but I set him straight. Well, thanks for keeping your cool and not resorting to violence. That sort of thing would only lead to more problems in the future. You both care about the vault's residents, but just in different ways. It's hard to forgive what he's done, but I suppose I can understand why he did it. I'm glad you brought him to his senses. I just had a little talk with him and explained a few things. All quite civil. You and him? Civil? I expected you to change out in the wasteland, but not that much. But I guess we'll all be learning a bit about the outside now, won't we? As a new overseer, I'm planning on opening the vault. This time, for good. It's a bright new day for the vault, but I'm afraid there's one thing that has to change. Whatever it is, I'm glad to help. I know you are. And on behalf of the vault, I thank you for all you've done. But there are still many who blame you for everything that happened. I've got a bad feeling about this. What is it? There are still so many things to repair and a lot of bad feelings to mend. Some people still blame you for what happened. So, I have to ask you to leave. I'm sorry, but the situation is just too delicate for you to stay. Please, if you really want to help the vault, you have to go. I saved the vault, and now you're kicking me out? No, it's not like that. But if you stay, it'll just keep causing more problems. The vault can't take any more infighting. It's just what has to be. It'll be a while before we're ready to really go outside. But once the vault is stable again, maybe we'll see you out there. I understand. Goodbye, Amara. We can never really thank you enough for everything you've done. It's not much, but take this with you to remember us by. It'll be a while before we're actually ready to go outside. But once the vault is stable again, maybe we'll see you out there. So, I guess this is goodbye for now. But with luck, we'll meet again. And with that, we get kicked out again! But this way we also get the Modified Utility Jumpsuit. The Modified Utility Jumpsuit is at full condition when we get it, and grants plus one to luck, plus ten to radiation resistance, and plus five to repair. One of the few items of clothing in the entire game that increases our luck skill. Note that we can only get this outfit by either siding with the rebels or siding with the overseer if we left Amada's father alive when exiting the vault. We don't get it if Alan Mack was the overseer. And that's because Alan Mack is even more unreasonable than Overseer Alphonse. With Alan Mack as overseer, we can't convince him to step down. We either have to side with him or kill him. If we choose this option, by siding with the rebels, who then open the door to the outside world, we unlock one new random encounter. Sometime later, we run into Susie Mack under attack. After defending her, we can talk with her. Wow, who would have thought I'd run into you out here? It's a small world, but not as small as the vault, I guess. Good to see you, Susie. Looks like you're doing well. Thanks. The whole vault's doing pretty well. I'm just out taking care of a little trading now, but they've got the place in much better shape than when you left. I never expected to see you out here either. I'm surprised you're alive. Hey, you're not the only one who can get used to the outdoors, you know. The whole vault's doing pretty well, as if you care. So, does that mean I can come back? I'm sorry, but that still can't happen. As much as we owe you, there are still a lot of people who blame you for all the deaths. It's not fair, I know, but it's the way it is. I know Amata still misses you. Doesn't really make a difference to me. I was exiled, remember? I know, it's not fair. It really isn't. But it's just the way it has to be. I know Amata still misses you. I miss her too. Give my warmest regards to the vault, would you? Oh, I will. They'll be glad to hear from you. Fine. Oh. I like it better up here than I ever did down there. Then I guess things worked out pretty well, huh? Take care of yourself out here, and thanks again. You've given the vault a whole new life. Well, don't let me hold you up. Yeah, I guess I should be getting back. I'll tell Amata you're okay. She'll be happy to hear that. Oh, and here, have some fresh water from the vault. I guess it's pretty hard to find it out here. Take care out here, and thanks again. 
and with that she gives us two purified water and continues on her way. But there is one other way to resolve things here in Vault 101, and it's the only solution that allows us to return to Vault 101 after we complete this quest. We remember that Butch told us that the events of that night caused damage in the reactor. We can head that way to inspect it ourselves, heading down to the reactor level. We can walk around one of the reactors and open the western door. Here we find a bank of reactors and Stanley working on them. I don't know that I should be talking with you. Oh, Stanley. He's the one who gave us our Pip-Boy and our red baseball cap for our birthday. It's sad to see him so hesitant to talk with us. Hey, Stanley, tell me about the Rebels. It's just a phase they're going through. Every kid thinks they want to leave the vault at some point, but we all grew out of it. What happened down here? With all of the bugs and fires, there was an awful lot of strain on the systems down on the reactor level. Our water chip's pretty delicate right now, but I'm working on setting her right again. If we sneak up behind him, we can pickpocket the Vault 101 maintenance password. Then, opening a door to the south, we find another door opening up to a room to the west, leading to a bank of monitors against a northern wall, and among them we find the Vault 101 maintenance terminal. If we don't have Stanley's password, we have to hack it, and it's a hard hack. Once inside, we find a few options. Vault 101. Settle in and stay a while. We can test the hydroponic system, and it's fully functional. We can test the air filtration system, and it's fully functional. And we can begin the water chip repair service. When we run the water chip diagnostic, we see that it's functional, but we can still begin manual service anyway. System disengaged. Do not run purge. But ignoring this warning, we can choose to run a systems purge. Purge error. Additional materials purged. No! No! Oh no, we've killed Stanley. We've ruined the vault forever. Now to escape with our life. The alarm blares throughout the vault, but as we leave, we are confronted by Alphonse. You just couldn't let us live in peace, could you? You couldn't have a home, so you decided to destroy ours. Now you don't have the option to stay hidden in the vault. How many of them do you think will survive out there? They're already in a panic and running out to their death! But you won't be joining them outside. I'll see to that myself! And with that, he turns hostile, and we have to put him down. Or we can try to pass a speech check. Uh, one of the rebels did it to force everyone to leave. I tried to stop them. We can lie. And if we fail... Even they aren't foolish enough to destroy their homes just to prove a point. It could only have been you. How many of them do you think will survive out there? Still, better a few of them stay alive out there than have them all die down here. The evacuation will begin immediately. But you won't be joining them outside. I'll see to that myself. And he again turns hostile. But if we pass the speech check... Why? Why would they throw away their home just to die outside in the miserable wasteland? Was I really so terrible an overseer? I must have pushed them too hard. Made the unknown seem too tempting. And now I've failed them. Their deaths will be my fault. Please, help a few of them stay alive out there and say goodbye to my daughter for me. I'll stay with the vault. It was my responsibility and my failure. And with that, the Overseer stays with his sinking ship. As we race through the vault, we see that everyone is gone. But when we arrive at the exit, we find Amada waiting for us. Oh, thank goodness you're here. I told everyone to wait here for you, that you'd know what to do, but they didn't listen to me. With everything they'd been through, they just panicked, but I knew you'd come back. I knew you'd know what was happening. You do, don't you? I caused the evacuation. Now everyone has to leave the vault. You've destroyed our home just to prove a point? You're insane! You're worse than my father ever was! I should never have helped you that night. I should have stayed with my father and watched him kill you. Now, you can stay down here and die for all I care. If you ever talk to me again out there, I'll kill you. Or we can pass a speech check to say, Your father started this. He said no one would leave if they all died. I I knew he was crazy, but I, I never would have thought he'd try to kill us all. It just doesn't make sense. 
But there's no time for that now, is there? Now, our only chance is to survive outside on our own. Maybe I can still find where some of them went. If we split up, it shouldn't be too hard. How big can the world be anyway? Thanks for trying to help us. Maybe we'll meet again out there. And with that, she races outside. This is the only way we can ever return to Vault 101. The door doesn't close behind us, but there's no one left in the vault. If we choose this option, we unlock two new random encounters. One is a random encounter where we find the bodies of many Vault 101 residents just lying out in the wasteland. In another, we find Amata being interrogated by the Enclave. Sorry, miss, but we need to ask you a few questions. We need to know where you got that suit. I'm from Vault 101. Please, you've got to help me. Of course. We're always ready to assist American citizens in distress. Can you tell us where your vault is? I've got the location right here on my pit boy Why? Excellent. That's all we need from her. Open fire. On target. Attack pattern gamma. Patrol procedures. And they murder her in cold blood. If instead we get the jump on them and wipe out the Enclave. Away from me! This is all your fault! Amara wants nothing to do with us. If we chose to side with the rebels, we can find Butch Deloria inside the Muddy Rudder Bar at Rivet City. Well, if it isn't my best gal, the one who sprung me from the vault, I think I owe this lovely lady a drink. Oh, great. I thought I was rid of you. No such luck, sucker! Life ain't worth living without Butch around, and you can't keep a tunnel snake down! But if you're lucky, you can hold my empties. Here. And he gives us some empty whiskey bottles. Or we can say, how'd you get all the way down here? Same way anyone does. By being too cool to stop anywhere else. I didn't see a thing in the wasteland that was a match for a bona fide tunnel snake. So here's to freedom and rocking the wasteland. Drink up! And he gives us some whiskey. Or we can say, sounds like a deal. Good to see you on the outside, Butch. Here's to raising hell and living a good life out here. Cheers! Now all we need is a gang, and we could take over this whole wasteland. And he gives us more whiskey. Hey, Butch, can you give me a haircut? I'm going to barber the hell out of that here. <laughs> I love Butch. Still want to start that gang, Butch? Hell yeah, I do. I could be out there and kicking butt in my own gang and everything. The tunnel snakes could ride again! Or, you know, slither again. Whatever. Yeah. Shame you're too much of a coward to start it yourself. Yeah. Well, what do you know? I'm gonna go out there and I'm gonna have the biggest, toughest gang ever. You know, tomorrow. Once I round up a few more people. You know, you could join forces with me if you'd like. What? A goody two-shoes like you could never make it in a real gang. You want to hang with a tunnel snake like me? You gotta be hard. If our karma is too good, he says no. Or if we have evil karma, we can say, ride with me, and we can rampage across the wasteland. Whoa, whoa, hey, that's cool and all, but you're just a little too intense, you know? I mean, Butch is down for action, but you, you're a psycho. And if our karma is too evil, he says no. But if we have a neutral karma, we can say, Come along with me, and we'll make an awesome gang. Yeah, yeah, you'd be perfect for my gang. You're in. Tunnel snakes rule. And with that, he joins us as a companion. As a companion, he can barber our hair at any time, and we can access his inventory. He has a unique weapon called Butch's Toothpick. It's a switchblade, and the best switchblade in the game. It deals 10 damage per attack compared to a switchblade's five. And it has a 2.5 critical multiplier compared to a Switchblade's 2. That brings its critical damage up to 13 compared to a Switchblade's 9, and its DPS up to 30 compared to a Switchblade's 15. After we recruit him, he'll stick with us regardless of our karma level, until we dismiss him. Then the only way to get him back is if we again approach him with neutral karma. 
And that's the full and final story of Vault 101. Its future lies entirely in our hands. But which option is the best? Is it better to side with the Overseer and make sure everyone stays safe in the vault? Is it true that they'll run out of diverse genetic material in less than a hundred years? Did you destroy the vault to force everyone out of it so you could claim it for yourself? Or did you side with the rebels, opening up the possibility of trade with the Wasteland while also opening up a possibility of being invaded by the Enclave? I publish many videos each and every week on my channel, so if you don't want to miss it, be sure to subscribe and to click that bell notification button. If you have and you feel like you're missing out on YouTube notifications, consider following me on Twitter at Oxhorn. I update Twitter manually with every new piece of content that I publish. I have a shirt shop with completely unique designs that you can't find anywhere else. My designs come on shirts in a variety of men's, women's, and children's sizes and in a wide array of colors. You can find them on other products as well, like smartphone cases, pillows, posters, stickers, mugs, prints, etc. So if interested, you can find a link to my shop in the description below, or you can click here. If you like what I do and you want to support me in a more personal way, consider becoming a patron on Patreon or a member here on YouTube. But more than anything, I'm just so glad you're here watching this video with me today. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you soon with more brand new videos.